Hi, I'm Rob, and today I'll be presenting on Autoprompt, our work on eliciting knowledge from language models using automatically generated prompts. This is joint work with my co-authors Taylor Shin, Yasaman Rosegi, Eric Wallace, and Samir Singh. The key goal in this work is to automatically create prompts, which reformulate natural language processing tasks as fill in the blanks or complete the sentence problems so that they can be solved by a language model. For example, to pose sentiment analysis as a language modeling task, you could take the input sentence you're trying to classify and then append the text, overall, this movie was blank, and see whether the language model predicts a higher probability for the word good, which would indicate positive sentiment, or bad, which would indicate negative sentiment. Prompts are an extremely useful tool for understanding the knowledge that is learned by language models during pre-training. For instance, in GPT-2, they were able to show that language models learned to perform some degree of summarization by appending TLDR to a long piece of text and then seeing what it generated afterwards. Similarly, in the LLAMA paper, they were able to show that language models are also capable of performing knowledge-based completion tasks. Compared to other methods for probing language model knowledge, prompts have a number of desirable properties. So for one, prompts are parameter free, and thus unlike probing classifiers, there's no issue of conflating things that the language model knows with things that your probe has learned. In addition, because prompts characterize language model knowledge purely in terms of their outputs, there's no danger in picking up spurious patterns that are not affecting the model, as is the case with attention mechanisms. Prompts can also potentially provide benefits over fine tuning. Namely, because many prompts can be used to get a single language model to solve many tasks, you avoid having to store fine-tuned model weights for each individual task. However, despite all of this, widespread use of prompts is significantly inhibited by the fact that they typically require intuition as well as manual effort to create, and thus are not a scalable solution to many problems. In order to encourage more widespread use of prompts, we introduce AutoPrompt, an automated method for generating prompts using gradient-guided search. The key idea is, unlike manually writing prompts, to exploit the large amounts of supervised training data for many tasks in order to come up with good tokens to put in the prompt. As we will see in the following slides, AutoPrompt is better than handwritten prompts on some tasks, as well as sometimes better than fine-tuning. The method generally works as follows. We begin with a template, which specifies where the task inputs should occur in the prompt, as well as placeholders for a number of trigger tokens that are learned by AutoPrompt, and a predict token upon which we will measure the language model outputs. Using this template, we can then combine an input from the dataset along with an instantiation of the trigger tokens to produce a prompt that looks like this. The prompt is then fed into the language model, and we then collect the probabilities over a set of label tokens, which we will discuss how they are determined in a moment, in order to get overall label probabilities out from the model. As can be seen, our prompts aren't guaranteed to be grammatical or even sensible, but they also produce more effective results than manual prompts, which we will show in the experiments section. We will now describe two aspects of AutoPrompt in greater detail. The first is how the trigger search is performed. In essence, our method uses the same exact approach as that used in the Universal Adversarial Triggers paper, with one key exception. In the Universal Adversarial Triggers paper, the goal was to provoke models to predict a singular label, whereas in our case, we want to make the model predict the correct label for each input instance. The method can be briefly summarized as follows. We begin by instantiating all of the trigger tokens with mask tokens. 
We then measure the language model likelihood on a batch of example prompts. Using this likelihood, we can compute a first order approximation to the change in probability that would be produced by switching one of the tokens. By doing this, we can identify a set of the top K tokens that are most likely to improve the likelihood of the labels, and we can then evaluate them on development data. The one that evaluates to have the best likelihood on the development data is then used as a replacement for one of the mask tokens, and we continue to iterate this process. We terminate once the set of label tokens is static across multiple iterations. In addition to this trigger search procedure, we also include a procedure to automatically determine a set of label tokens to use in cases where it is not obvious. For instance, for the sentiment analysis class, it might not be the case that positive and negative are the best labels to look at for the language model probabilities of. To, in order to obtain a better set of words, we begin by training a linear classifier on top of the masked token representation from the language model. This produces a vector representation for every label in the classification task. We can then identify a set of candidate words to use as label tokens by finding the words whose vector representations in the output layer of the language model are closest to the learned representations of these um, labels. Let's now go over a couple of experimental results. So the first thing that we want to see is whether our method outperforms or is competitive with manual prompts. The first task we look at is sentiment analysis on the Stanford Sentiment Tree Bank. The manual prompt we've used is shown above and the automatically generated prompt is shown below. As we can see, for both Bert and Roberta, our prompt tends to elicit better performance on this task than the manual prompt, achieving 5 to 10 percent better performance roughly. Next we study how well AutoPrompt is able to do at fact retrieval in comparison to the Llama and Alpaca datasets, which are comprised of either manually written prompts or prompts created from data scraping. Again, we have provided an example manually written prompt and automatically generated prompt on the right. And again, we see that the automatically generated prompts tend to elicit better performance from language models than manually written ones. These results establish that AutoPrompt is an effective tool for probing language models. So now let's see what kinds of additional insights about language models it can give us. While it's clear that language models are able to recall facts, one thing we're interested in is if they're also able to comprehend text. So we create a variant of the LLAMA task where instead of just providing a triple to be completed, we also provide additional com context that should help the language model solve the um, fill in the blanks problem. Initial results on this task look quite encouraging. However, if we alter the tasks when using real-world contexts extracted from Wikipedia, we observe that language models are quite capable at this task. However, it's still possible that they are using knowledge that they've memorized during pre-training. In order to adjust for this, we create a variant of this data set where the contexts are perturbed to change the answer of the triple. In doing this, we see a uniform drop across all um, probes, which indicates that language models are actually still relying on information that was learned during pre-training as opposed to reading. We are also interested in studying what AutoPrompt can tell us about how much pre-trained language models know in comparison to their fine-tuned counterparts. Looking again at sentiment analysis, we find that pre-trained language models actually learn quite a bit about sentiment during pre-training. Not only do they perform comparably within 5 to 10 points of their fine-tuned counterparts, but we find that in some cases 
prompted language models can actually outperform fine-tuned recent language models. However, we do notice that there are some difficulties applying this method to specific data sets. For instance, looking at natural language inference on the SICKI data set, it appears that prompts are not able to elicit much better performance than random chance on this task. One of the primary reasons for this is that the labels are quite imbalanced in this data set. So if we rebalance the labels, we do find that this at least fixes the disparity somewhat. The last thing we investigate in our experiments is how much training data is needed to learn good prompts versus to learn a good fine-tuned model. And here, there are actually quite interesting results. So for one, for BERT, both models perform pretty comparably in low data regimes. Even more interesting is that for the Roberta model, we actually find that automatically generated prompts are able to elicit better performance from language models on downstream tasks than fine tuning using small amounts of data. Although these results are far from conclusive, they suggest that there's some potential that engineering prompts may be preferable to fine tuning on small data sets. So with that, I hope these results have convinced you that automatic prompt generation is not only a viable alternative to manual prompt generation, but it's an exciting tool for researchers to use for probing language models, as well as an interesting area to pursue as an alternative to fine tuning. We would love it if you would download AutoPrompt yourself and give it a spin. Right now it's designed to support a large range of Hugging Face Transformers models, as well as JSON lines and CSV formatted datasets. And before I go, I would like to thank my co-authors one last time, and I look forward to seeing you at the poster session. Bye.